Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone and welcome home. Jason here and uh, today we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to take a break from the Will It Linux gaming series as well as the app spotlights and dive into a little bit of distro coverage. It's been a minute since I've done that and it's been many minutes since I featured Zorin OS on the channel. I think the la maybe the first and only time that I have uh, touched on Zorin OS was January 2020 when they announced Zorin Grid. And I covered it at Forbes uh, back when I was writing at Forbes regularly, but it has been a year and a half since I have seen Zorin OS and I have not seen the brand new version, Zorin OS 16 at all. All I've seen is the installer. So what I wanted to do today is walk through this together, kind of give some first impressions, and give you a bit of a, uh, a video walkthrough. Artyom Zorin sent me uh, two versions of Zorin OS 16 last night, ahead of the Tuesday, August 17th launch, the, the public launch. It's been in beta for a bit. But uh, I wanted to look at Zorin OS 16 Pro. Now, this is the paid version of Zorin OS that's going to replace... Zorin OS Ultimate, so they're calling it Pro now, and uh, it's it's not the only version of Zorin OS. There are there are plenty. There's Zorin OS Core, which still gives you a a really good, solid, stable, and and pretty beautiful Zorin OS experience. Um, and that's this is all based on my my time with Zorin OS 15 back in I think 2019, early 2020. So I have a fresh install of Zorin OS 16 Pro on the uh, Tuxedo Pulse 15 laptop. Let's leave this welcome tour for just a moment. And I want to actually show you the uh, announcement of Zorin OS Pro. We can kind of look at this together. So this is, uh, like I said, it's a paid version. I'm actually not sure how much it costs yet. I'm going to, uh, hopefully we're going to see that here on this uh, blog announcement somewhere. So with uh, Zorin OS Pro, you get these additional premium desktop layouts and one of them looks a lot like Windows 11. In fact, uh, it's interesting in the beta, which came out in April, I was digging through their announcements and they said there is a Windows 10 X like layout coming. So uh, I guess the, the announcement of Windows 11 gave them time to freshen up that little, that little tidbit. But anyway, so in the pro version, you're going to get eight layout switchers, which just instantly allow you to kind of change the look and feel of your desktop paradigm, whether uh, whether you're used to maybe Mac OS or Ubuntu or Windows or KDE or uh, just a lot of different options here. So we'll check that out as we go along in this little uh, exploration of Zorin OS 16 Pro. So you do get these four standard layouts with the core version. The core version is free. And a professional grade creative suite. Create with the same apps the pros use. Hey, the pros like me. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I don't know. Let's actually see what's in here. This looks this looks a lot like Caden Live, which I use. Uh, I don't do anything with graphics because I'm terrible. So these are probably not. Uh, <laughs> they'll be installed, I'm sure, but uh, not something I'd use. But it's really interesting that they do not call out the names of the apps. And this is where the Zorn OS marketing has always distinguished itself. It's very high level. It's very uh, general, kind of vague, not exactly talking to the the experienced Linux users, the people who live in kind of our, our little bubble, you know, our echo chamber. So... Zorin OS Pro includes an advanced video editor, Photoshop compatible image editor, illustration software, audio workstation, animation software, etc. There's there's no name drops of the actual software titles, and I find that really really interesting. And again, there's no there's no real callouts, you know, preloaded with apps and tools to help you be more productive. So we're gonna have to explore those on our own and find out what those apps are. Um, this is called Barrier, and this lets you share your mouse and keyboard across computers. So it looks like it also ships with um, Miracast compatible uh, casting to, to your TV and other desktops. 
And you've got some other productivity apps here. Uh, lots of new backgrounds. And this is what I like. There's a Pro Light Edition, which uses, I believe this uses XFCE. It looks like it uses XFCE. And uh, Zorn's implementation of XFCE from Zorn OS 15 was quite attractive. So that might be worth checking out as well if you've got an older machine with less uh, less hardware resources at your disposal, less, less CPU cores, less RAM, etc. Currently, so this is not on sale until Tuesday. Currently, they're selling Zorn OS Ultimate and it is 39 euros or... 39 euros, whoops, euros, euros to USD. So it's about $45. Now, I'm not here to get into a discussion of whether it's worth the $45. I will, however, say very emphatically that I believe uh, developers have a right to be paid and all distros have a right to charge money if they want to so that they can, uh, you know, have an income to sustain their lives and to improve the products that they're working on. And I have to tell you, I really appreciate the approaches that both Elementary OS and Zorin OS have. Elementary OS, they only have one edition and it's kind of a pay what you want model. That, that payment can be $0, but it's a pay what you want model. In Zorin OS, they have three different editions, I believe. The core is perfectly uh, perfectly capable of being your uh, desktop daily driver, your laptop daily driver. But then they also offer this feature-packed, uh, you know, icing on top edition of Zorin OS 16. And so it gives you choice. And I, I really like that. I appreciate what they're doing here. So, okay, let's go ahead and take the tour. Welcome to Zorin OS 16. Let's start the tour. Open the menu to launch apps. Pretty basic, okay. Choose your desktop look with Zorin Appearance. Okay, ah, let's launch, I can't help it, let's launch it. All right, so these are interesting. They're not, they're not labeled. I expected that they would be labeled, uh, but the diagrams definitely tell you what you're going to get. So uh, I don't know, let's switch it around. So this is our default. And we'll switch it to this, which gives us kind of that KDE Windows 10 desktop paradigm. Uh, the, oh, that's that's actually very nice with the centered dock. And okay, all right, nice. This is kind of classic, uh, oh, is it gonna, it's taking a minute. Oh, wait, there we go, okay. Had to. <laughs> Let's click that again. Oh, I see. That's clean. That's really nice and clean. Just a lot, just lots of space on your desktop to work with. Okay. So I wonder, is this the, is this the Windows 11 design? I don't know. Okay. That's not, that's kind of attractive with the, uh, the curved, centered dock there. Although I do wish it was just a little bit, um, not quite as tall, maybe, but still nice. Yeah, still nice. Nice fluid animations too. Okay, ah, this, this is the Windows 11, clearly the Windows 11 inspired look with the, the centered uh, <laughs> super key, menu key here. Yeah, okay, I, I still like, Guys, everything is subjective about a desktop and how you want to use it and, and what what's attractive to you. But I just don't like I I don't like it. I don't like this kind of off center menu here, and I'm not going to like that in Windows 11 either. But choice choice is great. Okay, this all right, and this one. So what is the difference between? Ah, that's just a, a more minimized and kind of streamlined menu, app menu. Okay, I kind of like that actually. So we'll go back to the way that it ships out of the box here and let's see what themes we have. All right, okay, so you can schedule 
uh, kind of a dynamic light dark theme. Let's see how our dark theme looks. Ah, oh, that's nice. That has a nice pop to it. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I like the, uh, I like kind of that, I guess a charcoal, like dark charcoal gray that they're using here. Yeah, that's nice. And of course we can change the accent colors. So I am just gonna stay with the defaults. I really like this. Title bar buttons, left or right? Enable animations, absolutely. Here's a new feature that uh, <laughs> I think you pro Linux veterans might uh, remember this one. Wobbly windows, except they call it jelly mode. This is back from what the comp is days, I think. And then it just kind of whoop, like sucks it back in. Yes, let's see that, let's, ah, I love it. <laughs> okay, and what else do we have? Desktop options, icon sizes. So let's, let's just put the home folder on the desktop and change our icon sizes, all right. See, these are, these are such user-friendly options and it's not overwhelming. You know, uh, I personally love KDE, but you have to admit that there is such an abundance of options and you can just drill down and get so deep into the weeds with customizing that sometimes it's, you can mess something up and it's pretty easy to, uh, to just get so sidetracked by all of those, all of those choices. But this is nice. Um, basic, simple, easy to find and execute appearance options. And then we've got some fonts as well. Okay, next on the tour, connect your online accounts. Let's see what options we have. Yeah, pretty much the, okay, standard stuff. I love that Nextcloud is here. And I like that Microsoft is here. Okay. Link your phone and computer with Zorin Connect. So I, I think that Zorin Connect is based on the, is it, is it G Connect? I'm not sure what the GNOME implementation of KDE Connect is called, but uh, this is based on that. And I used it with Zorin OS 15, works well. Okay, let's launch the software store. Oh, that's okay. All right, so very reminiscent of GNOME. The Ubuntu users will feel right at home. Let's go shopping. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you guys about the software store in Zorin OS is they take kind of a hybrid approach. So they are pulling in the FlatHub repository. So you've got Flatpak support and they are pulling in a Canonical's Snap store as well. And all of the app repositories from Ubuntu and Zorin OS. So there is a lot to choose from here. Office suite for work. This is, I like the way this looks. It's very clean. And it, it, at a glance, you can, you can definitely see what's installed and what your additional option would be if you want uh, more, I guess, direct Office, Microsoft Office compatibility. Now, if we click install here on only Office, what is going to happen? Oh, okay. So it's just going to install the flat pack. Okay. Wow, all right, great. I like that this is included in the tour because you know a lot of people need various office uh, productivity apps. Yeah, nice, okay. That's it, we hope that you enjoy Zorin OS and close. Okay, so we have made it through the welcome tour and that was a, that was a pretty pleasant experience actually. That would get me, it, 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 you know, if I was a brand new user to Linux or even just to Zorin OS, I, I would feel a little bit more acclimated to what what makes this Linux distribution um, unique, I guess, or or just how I get around and how I customize and where I can install new software. So overall, a job well done on the, the Zorin OS 16 welcome package. But now let's take a little bit of a deeper look into what makes this pro version of Zorin OS pro. So before we dig into all the software that is available in the pro version of Zorin OS 16, let's go ahead and get kind of our basic, um, our basic system stats. And for that, we're gonna just go to the about app. 
Is it is it there? About? Hello? About. Huh. Huh. Weird. Okay, what if I do what what if I do it this way? About. That's interesting. Hmm. Interesting. So how come I can see it there in the global search, but not here? Well, okay. All right, so this is the Pulse 15 Gen 1. AMD Ryzen 7 4800H with Radeon graphics. It's a beast. I mean, you don't need this. You don't need this much power. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> here we go. Zorin OS 16. X11 Windows. So there's not, like, this is the thing I don't love about the About page. There's not a lot of details. For most people, that's probably okay. But I want to dig a little bit deeper. So what I like to do is, let's make this just a bit a bit larger so you guys can see it. I like to head to the terminal and do sudo apt install neofetch. And neofetch. So now, wait, let me do this, clear, neofetch, okay. Now Zorin OS 16 is based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and it's using the 5.11 kernel, which means we've got the hardware enablement stack activated to support newer hardware. Now let's, okay, let's go into Zorin Appearance, which is pinned right here. And let's just, um, I really don't like the default size of this, of this window. And I can't, why? Why can't I, why can't I? adjust the size of this window. Huh. Yeah, you just you just can't. Well, okay. I don't know, I'm just like that. I like to see the whole, yeah, I can't snap it either. Wow. Okay. Um, I want to change to, let's see here. Yeah, sure. No, let's, <laughs> see, this is already too much choice for me. I'm <laughs> getting overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with the choice. Uh, sure. I just wanted to take a look at the app grid here. So are these, yeah, this is everything. Okay. So let's try and pick out what is, what kind of, what's the convenience factor? What have they pre-installed for us for, you know, for creative professionals, for content producers, for photographers, video editors, etc. So we have Ardor, which is a digital audio workstation. And I have I have not used this much in the past, but uh, I do know some Linux musicians who really dig this. Oh, I like this GUI and font scaling option right up front. This is, this is nice. All right, well, okay. We're not gonna dig in, we're not gonna look at that too much. We've got Audacity pre-installed. We have Blanket, which I've never heard of. What is Blanket? Huh. Oh. It's a white noise app. This is awesome. I have never heard of this before. <laughs> okay. I use a white noise app every single night. Look at that, wow, this is cool. Okay, let's add a little, oh. A little drama to our rainstorm. No wind, how about some waves sitting out on the beach? A rainy beach, you know what, let's, let's, okay, it's sunny now. Sunny waves at the beach. Stream, all right. Let's add a little bit of, get some birds here. <laughs> this is great. This is great. I don't know why I've never heard of this, but I could sit here and play with this for half the afternoon. <laughs> all right, let's kill all of this and...
Ah. Uh, okay, how about a boat? Wow, man, this is cool. This is really cool. What's custom? Oh, add your own audio. Very nice. So I could add, for example, um, I took some uh, audio recordings of the sea when I was over in uh, Preventura, Croatia this summer, and I could just add that because I've got about a like 10 to 15 minute loop. So I could add this and then and then sprinkle in my own, uh, hell, let's have a fire. Let's have a fire at Studio B. Oh man, very nice. Okay, I'm sorry, I won't play with this too much. That is, that's that's a nice app to have on here. This is great, okay. Um, and I just discovered something new today. Maybe I'll do an app spotlight on Blanket. That's 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 pretty neat. We've got Blender, okay. Dark table. Feeds. This is going to be an RSS reader. Yep. And nothing else. Oh, FreeCAD. Don't know much about that. I know it's for working with CAD files, but it's nice to have included. Caden Live, which I use all the time. Kuha? I don't know what Kuha is. This is a screen capture utility. Okay. So we can a selection or full screen. All right. Well, let's just. Yeah, start recording. Okay, okay, okay. So this and that and this. And let's stop. Screencast recorded, saved in videos. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Well, excellent. That's decent quality just for defaults. I mean, does it's not going to be as good as my uh, my video capture settings with OBS, but that's that's great. Okay, so nice to see that included as well. All right, what other nice goodies do we have? LibreCAD, so another uh, FOSS CAD software. LibreOffice, of course. Uh, is this Google Maps? No, this is OpenStreetMap. Okay, nice, nice. Krita, network displays. Now this is what, this was kind of the screencasting available video syncs, but I don't think I have anything compatible, so let's just skip that. Ah, uh, PDV is another, if I'm not mistaken, another video editing app. Uh, it's a little bit more simplified than, than a Caden Live. Virtual box is here. Um, oh, and you know what I forgot to mention? Uh, I didn't have to install OBS. OBS was already here, so that was nice. I, I was uh, I was kind of worried, like, oh, I want to I want to go through this kind of having a uh, I guess a virgin experience, you know, not using the distro at all until I hit record. So it was nice that this was actually pre-installed. I didn't have to go launch a browser or go get into the store or do anything. I just uh, launched it, set it up, and hit record. In terms of the pre-installed applications, I know that that so many of you, this is not a this is not a big deal to you. But for the average PC user, or for someone who's just in a hurry, uh, I'll tell you about how I feel about the pre-installed software selection as Jason, as the guy who is a podcaster and a video content producer. If I need to do any kind of audio editing, I've got Audacity built in. And that's great. So, you know, after the fact, if I need to maybe apply some noise reduction to the uh, the audio of a recording, then I'll just drag that into Audacity. It'll use FFmpeg to import it. Let's just show you, let's actually show you what, what I would do. Uh, and so if I have enough, all right, so this is a good, what you want to do to do simple noise reduction in Audacity is you just get a few seconds of silence. And that's kind of like the room noise. So it's going to capture the room noise. And then what I'm going to do is go into noise reduction and get noise profile. So it's just sampling this selection of noise. 
And that's going to tell Audacity, okay, this is what he wants to remove from the recording. And then you just go back and you apply noise reduction to the entire track, just like that. Now, if I need to do some video editing, right? Caden Live is installed. And I used to be really sour on Caden Live. Uh, I used it back in 2020. I was trying um, that, and I was trying Olive, and I was trying DaVinci Resolve and uh, Lightworks. And I had a pretty terrible experience with Caden Live. But this year, I think they got to, was it maybe 20.08 or 20.04? They had an update earlier this year, and uh, that's when they added the, the different workspaces here for editing audio effects and color. And it just got, it got so much more stable. Really, really, it, it just, it just was a complete turnaround for me. Now your mileage may vary, but, um, I am very happy with it these days. So, okay. Can I edit that screencast? Can I add that? Yep. Of course it works. Oh, and look. Uh, the Kuha screencast app that I showed you earlier, it defaults to 1080p 60 FPS. That's cool. So yeah, let's switch the profile to that. And let's drag in um, the app grid look that we just recorded. And boom. And so, so my point is I've got, I've got the audio editing capability. I've got video editing capability. If I had some, uh, I don't know, some some product shots, I've got Darktable. <laughs> I've got OBS pre-installed for doing this video, for capturing this little walkthrough. And, you know, so for someone like me, guys, it's actually, it's very beneficial to have all of this stuff pre-installed. And someone who's not, who comes into Linux or comes into even maybe the Ubuntu ecosystem and isn't used to it, uh, they've got, you know, they've got the Zorin Appearance app. Oh, I don't want to stop recording. No, <laughs> they've got the Zorin Appearance app to uh, give them most likely a a presentation, a look and feel that they're used to, that they're comfortable with. And appearance wise, um, you know, I have to say I'm one of the people who I like the rounded corners. I like the default, um, the, the accents, and it's just very, very clean, very smooth, great animations, responsive. So basically our, our pretty standard GNOME settings here. But you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to check out some of these backgrounds. Ah, all right. Okay. Oh, it's time for a micro break. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Where do I get to, where do I get to my notifications in, uh... ah, there we go. Take a break from typing and look away <laughs> for 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, micro break. I can't do that right now. Oh, he's sad. Anyway, point being, uh, I think that Zorin OS has a very specific audience they're targeting. It's probably not um, professional Linux enthusiasts who love to tweak and love to rice and love to uh, have full control over the appearance. Even this, like, this is nice. This is nice. Oh, hey, check that out. Oh, I wish there was a DuckDuckGo link, though. That'd be, that'd be nice. Let's search Linux for everyone on YouTube. Huh, okay. I kind of like that. I kind of like how it separates out those uh, Wikipedia, Google, and, and video results. Hey, shameless plug. Um, <laughs> that was a good video. Uh, shameless plug, check out the Will It Linux gaming series uh, because I've been having a blast with that and I think that comes across in the videos. Anyway, let's go back and... Whoops, nope, I want to change the background to something with a little more color. It pops a little more, there we go. Here's another little touch that they've added to the file manager. Uh, do you see this files emblem? You can kind of label, uh, so let's label this important. Oh, okay. 
And let's label this one in progress. Huh. And let's label this one a favorite. And we'll label this one finished. Ha. Huh. Okay. And yep, those stay if we go into list view or in icon view. Very cool. I kind of like this. Uh, I kind of prefer that to the color coded files because the, the little icon, I mean, it makes sense. I know what the little clock represents, the heart represents, the check mark means it's complete. This means it's important. So yeah, nice little touch there. And you know what? I take it back. I actually do want to check out Zorin Connect. Let's do this right now. Let's check it out. So for those of you not familiar, Zorin Connect or, or KDE Connect, which I think is the um, kind of the source app for this functionality, uh, it lets you sync your phone's notifications with your computer. It lets you browse photos from your phone. You can use your phone as kind of a media remote for your computer. You can use it as a touchpad and a bunch of different things. So let's actually get this set up. Okay, I've got the app installed now and boom, it just instantly, right when I opened it from my Android, uh, available devices, yes, request pairing. Uh, let's send, oh gosh, let's see. All right, here's a, here's a photo of one of the Juno laptops that I just got in for review. Transfer successful. I kind of missed where it went. <laughs> uh, it's probably in downloads. Yep, there it is. Boom. That's the Juno Neptune 15. It's uh, something that I'll be reviewing here on the channel very, very soon. Okay. So we can see low battery notification, fully charged notification. Uh, wow. Get PC notifications and vice versa. Um, okay. Wow, there's a lot of options. And it's pretty... Pretty simple to navigate. Receive files, save files too. Okay, so we can choose to save them to any location here. Um, what do we have in advanced? Wow. Find my phone, ping. Experimental device, Jesus. Yeah, there's a lot of nice options here. Okay, well again, I don't wanna to get too far into the weeds uh, for all this stuff. The goal here is just kind of to give you a walkthrough and kind of let you see what it is like to experience Zorin OS 16. And I, I have to put this maybe in a pinned comment or something. I should have mentioned this at the top, not at the end of the video. Uh, when you purchase Zorin OS 16 Pro, it also comes with their customer support, with technical support. So again, for new users, for people maybe who are getting a, a fleet of systems for a small business and they want to put Zorin OS on there, then, you know, if they're all the pro packages, then they're going to have technical support. They're going to have help from Zorin. So that's nice. And it's, it's also nice for, you know, uh, less experienced PC users who are maybe just getting into Linux for the first time. Uh, so all in all, this is nice. I, I really like it. It's it's close enough to Ubuntu while while setting itself apart with some uh, I think some some much appreciated tweaks on the layouts and the themes and you know little just little touches that that make it stand out and uh, make it a little bit simpler to use a little bit more accessible for for new users I think I think that's it I just wanted to give you guys a, a brief overview of this and kind of check it out together. Um, for the first time. Anyway, if you guys do have questions about Zorin OS 16 or Zorin OS in general, or about Zorin Grid, which uh, has not launched yet, I'm gonna make sure that the Zorin OS team keeps an eye on these comments. And so go ahead and write your questions in the comments section if you want, or your, your uh, criticisms or praises or whatever you want. And I'll try to make sure that Artyom and the team see what you have to say. Anyway, this has been a lot of fun, you guys. Thank you for watching. And uh, there's, I'd love to do more of these. And in fact, I'd, I'd love to live stream them. The problem is that I'm not, I'm not in a position right now where I have, uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't risk doing a live stream of this because I'm expecting a lot of interruptions today. And um, we're getting ready to go on vacation. So there's a lot of, a lot of prep to do and a lot of just activity 
around the house. Um, so I wasn't sure I could get like a, a solid hour or two of uninterrupted quiet time. But if you do want to see uh, a live stream of any distro, please let me know in the comments. I think it would be a blast. I think it'd be a lot of fun to actually walk through a new distro or even an existing distro together and, and take your questions and actually, you know, take requests and say, hey, do this, benchmark this, uh, let me see this. That would be, that'd be something I'd like to do in the future. So don't be shy. Let me know. Anyway. Wow, that was dramatic. <laughs> anyway, that's been a, a brief walkthrough of Zorin OS 16. Pro, it launches on Tuesday, August 17th, along with the other Zorin OS editions. So check it out at zorinos.com. And until the next video, you all take care and take care of each other. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. See ya.